Hello everyone. Today's chapter is called The Unshushables. Since Dave and Lindsay had been almost shouting at each other in the middle of the cafeteria, you might think that a lot of other fifth graders in the room would have tuned in and paid attention to the commotion. You might think that a lot of the kids in the lunchroom already knew about the contest. But if you thought that, you'd be wrong. And you'd be wrong because you don't understand just how loud, how incredibly noisy it was in the cafeteria during fifth grade lunch. And not just on this one day, it was noisy during fifth grade lunch every day. Those of you at Cabot Yerksa probably understand this. It wasn't noisy only at lunch. Anywhere a bunch of these fifth graders got together, the talking got out of hand. That's why it's time to tell a little more about this particular set of fifth grade kids. Because there's more to tell, there's always more. A school system really is a little like the army, remember? About how kindergarten is sort of like basic training camp. Because kindergarten was where Dave and the other new recruits first learned the rules. They learned when to sit and when to stand, when to talk and when to hush when to walk and when to run, when to eat and nap and play and sing and draw and everything else. Because every system needs rules, no rules, no system. Most of the rules made perfect sense to Dave and the new recruits, especially rules like this. No fighting, no bullying, no shoving, no spitting, no biting, no stealing, no vandalism, no cutting in line, no snowball throwing and so on. For most kids, the really serious rules like that weren't hard at all. Those were the easy ones. The toughest rules were ones like no running in the halls. Hard. No disorderly behavior on the buses. Also hard. No candy or chewing gum. Very hard. But nowhere in the 44-page Lakedon Elementary School handbook did it actually say no whispering, chatting, talking, calling out, yelling, or shouting in classrooms, in the hallways, in the auditorium, or in the lunchroom. True, there was a rule about paying attention in class, and there was a rule about being respectful, and there was a rule about being courteous at all times. And Dave and his classmates obeyed those rules. At least, they thought they did. It's just that they all seemed to think they could talk and be courteous at the same time. And they all seemed to think they could talk and pay attention at the same time. Because none of these kids really meant to be disrespectful or disobedient or discourteous. But none of them wanted to stop talking. Ever. In fact, this group of kids had been given a nickname by the teachers at Lakedon Elementary School, and the name had stuck with them ever since they had all been in first grade together. They were the Unshushables. If Lakedon Elementary School had really been like the Army, then sometime, probably during second grade, Dave and Lindsay and all the other recruits would have been lined up out on the playground on a cold, rainy morning, and a gruff man with short hair and shiny shoes would have walked up and down in front of them, shouting right into their faces. And he would have shouted something like this. You drive me crazy! You call yourselves students! You are a miserable mob! You are loud! undisciplined and I will not tolerate your noise. When you walk in my hallways you do not shout, you do not wave and yell and hoot when you see your friends. At an assembly in my school you do not whisper and giggle and point and wave and laugh at your own silly jokes. And when you come to my lunchroom, it is not a free-for-all festival of flap-jaw jibber-jabber. Lunch is a time to sit and be quiet and eat. I am going to teach you little motor mouth monsters proper school manners if it is the last thing I do. Do I make myself clear? Yes, sir! Quieter! 
Yes, sir. But of course, Lakedon Elementary School wasn't the Army. However, with Mrs. Abigail Hyatt in charge, sometimes it felt that way. She was a tall woman with a long face, curly gray hair, and bright blue eyes, and she had been the principal at Lakedon Elementary School for the past 13 years. She gave careful orders, set precise goals, and she demanded results from her teachers, from her office staff, from her custodians, from her cafeteria workers, and from her students and their parents, too. Her school never went over its budget, never missed its academic targets, and the place never felt loose or sloppy or disorderly. Under Mrs. Hyatt's watchful eye, group after group of children had wandered into Lakedon Elementary School as aimless little kindergartners and marched out six years later as perfectly disciplined young students. Under Mrs. Hyatt's leadership, the place ran like clockwork. And then the unshushables came along. In all her years as principal, she had never known a group of kids like this. And for the past five years, Mrs. Hyatt had been trying to make these kids obey the simplest school rule of all. No talking, except when it's allowed. Year after year, memos had been sent home to the parents of Dave and his classmates about too much shouting on the school buses. Year after year, Dave's grade had been told how to behave before each assembly. Year after year, all their teachers had stood out in the hallways to try to keep the noise down before and after school and especially at lunchtime. This group had even been given a separate lunch period for the past three years in a row. Third grade lunch, fourth grade lunch, and this year, fifth grade lunch. Mrs. Hyatt had made that decision. She didn't want the noisy behavior of this group to infect the other children at her school because year after year, the unshushables lived up to their nickname. To be honest, a few of this year's fifth grade teachers had already given up. They didn't have any real hope of changing these kids. They were just trying to cope because it was already November. So in six short months, the unshushables would be gone forever, moved along to the junior high, and next year, Lakedon Elementary School would be quieter, much quieter. But Mrs. Hyatt had not given up, not by a long shot. She still had over half a year with these kids and she intended to use that time. Every day, the principal stalked the fifth grade hall. You there, stop shouting. At every assembly, she glared. And I don't want to hear even a whisper from our fifth graders. Is that clear? At every fifth grade lunch, she walked around the cafeteria with a big red plastic bullhorn. And when the noise became unbearable, she pulled the trigger and bellowed, students, you are talking too loud. Mrs. Hyatt felt sure that this constant reminding had to be having an effect on these kids. How could it not? After all, these were good kids, right? They had to be making progress didn't they? She knew she was being very stern with them, but it was for their own good. And Mrs. Hyatt felt sure that sooner or later these kids would grow up a little and quiet down a lot. Here she is with her red plastic bullhorn. And now, it's time to tell what happened in the middle of the second Tuesday in November during Dave Packer's final year at Lakedon Elementary School. It was two minutes before fifth grade lunch and the principal was ready, just like always. Mrs. Hyatt had checked to be sure that the other teacher who had fifth grade lunch duty wasn't out sick or at a meeting because it wasn't good to try to manage fifth grade lunch all by yourself. And just like always, she had ordered Mr. Lipton, the custodian, to stay in the cafeteria today until 1240. Because with this group, the more grown-ups around, the better. And Mrs. Hyatt had double-checked the batteries in her red plastic bullhorn. Because it wasn't good to have a dead bullhorn during fifth grade lunch. 
Then the bell rang, and as classroom doors along the fifth grade hall flew open, Mrs. Hyatt could hear them coming, all of them already calling to each other as locker doors clanged open and banged shut, already talking a mile a minute, already laughing and whooping and shouting, streaming down the hallway toward the cafeteria an unshushable wave of energy and excitement and noise. So much noise. Mrs. Hyatt took her position at the center of the cafeteria and braced herself. She was ready for today's lunchroom battle, ready to change chaos into order, ready for anything these kids could dish out. But nothing could have prepared her for what happened next. As for what happens next, we'll have to see tomorrow, although I bet you already have your own prediction. See you then.